Nobody? Alright. I wasn't expecting some resistance. But no, it's quiet. So, heading, yep. Straight ahead. Should we go to the highway? Maybe. Yeah, there is a dust. No. Look who's back. Good well, waiting for us. The resistance was quickly destroyed. Do we have something? Nope. Time to go. Seems like our indicators indicate. This way. And we have a uh, nice weather. Very nice. What's this? It's like a graveyard. Might be a. Gr oh it's not it's a town but it seems like a graveyard graveyard sorry resting estate oh that's it I'll take B. I take Sank at the water. Except that it's radioactive. We can, yes, we can keep eggs like this. First time I try. Nice. And we have a sign baseball.
both of in cars and no sign this world can. What else? Nice eggs. Well done, Valentine. I'm gonna kill more. Why do you say Valentine? There is a vertiburn there. And super mutant. Come on. Never have the time to to shoot the head. I hit him. What? What do you say? Can't be serious. Gotta be a good fight. Yeah, yeah. No. Leave me alone. You damn super mutants. So let's begin with the upper side. What 
your way up to here. Not much. Gotta keep moving. We're awful vulnerable here. Not really. We've cleaned the place, Valentine. Don't worry. You building a collection or something? Yep, that's right. I'm gonna switch uh, companion, uh, I guess. This one begins to annoy me. Oh, nice. You can call a country. Ah, yes, Valentine is not very efficient. So. Message to clear Pazinski. Time to start thinking about a vacation. How does six weeks in Ireland sound to you? Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford. Every week in that little bed and breakfast to kill Kenny. Have you done Valentine? Doesn't even know how to walk. I have some bug. Place to to put a, uh, a grenade on the super mutants aren't really smart. This might be the cause.
sail there and look at that. A stunningly of some tears. The starlit sniper. to unlock this terminal That's it. Cool, cool, cool finish our quest we will head to Devon City. It's been a long time. on need the uh, healing I suggest uh, su sorry I suggest to go to Dr. Sun or oh, his uh, repressor in this truck so in this uh, shelter he will heal you for 50 caps only like the treatment so options bandaging wounds and cleaning radiation and cure yeah. me go over your symptoms and you say cure it. it's only 40 caps it will cure you any rats you have and for only uh, uh, 15 caps it will cure health 
so that's that great. All right. And Don't he will cure chemo addictions too, there. as you may have seen. It's a uh, really great way if you. It's a it's a cheap way. In fact, I will get. Really selling. Here's your free copy. Yeah, free copy. Thank you, Carl. Uh, do I need Valentine for a quest? Do I to CIT? Not, no need. So maybe they can. Okay, I'll switch with Piper. Do we have? Hey. I'm all ears. Looking for something? No, he only has. Oh, yes, some. Okay, I'll leave you the pack of cigarettes. And. Uh, yes, rifle, okay. And I'll get Piper if she's there. Maybe sleeping? Nope. I don't know where she is. Alright, we'll switch companion later. Piper, where are you? Oh, she may be... Testament. Hanging out with Valentine, huh? Good for you. you think he's good people. So, hey, it's chatting Joe. with this guy, you we find will any finish the quest. Items I mentioned? Yep. Got them all right here. <laughs> I like your gumption. Let me take a look. <sighs> this baseball. It's the real deal. You'd sign one of these and give it to the children of anyone you killed on the field. Look at that card. See those numbers on the back? Tracks the count of enemies beaten to death by the player. Check out the leather on that mitt. Ah, really good players use them to catch bullets. True fact there. That's everything on the list. <laughs> Thank you. Far as I'm concerned, you're now a part of baseball collector history. Thank you. And that completes what yeah. left in the field. Right. It's hard without Gwen. And if we need ammunition, we can go to Arturo Rodriguez. There is some objects there too. Or maybe I can talk 
because there is a Let's be in this place, or this basement. Miss? Uh, hello. Have you been here before? No, first time. Thought so. Some ground rules. This isn't a charity. Clothes are for sale if you have the money. Otherwise, the door's right there. No mooching. Got it. Good. Now that we understand each other, welcome to Fallon's. Happy to show you everything in stock. Let's see what you have. A paying customer. Finally. Shipman clothes. And some special armors. Hazmat suit. I didn't know that somebody was selling it. But you don't need it. Charisma clothes are great. A week two. Alright, good to know. No quest, no things like this. So what do you say? What I, can do. I know you have something like to hey, tell let me. Let me ask you something. Okay, ask. Just uh, with everything that's happened with you and your, your family, it's a whole hell of a lot to process. I, I wanted to make sure you're holding up all right. Oh, that's nice. I don't know, Nick. My family's in tatters. I've been dropped into this place where I mean, everything's trying to kill me. <laughs> you tell me. Well, I'd expect you to feel lost, scared, and mad as hell. I sure did. Took me a long damn time to get a feel for this place. Thank goodness I found Diamond City. It's got its flaws, sure, but it beats the hell out of anywhere else in the Commonwealth. Of course, when I took up there back when, people were just as scared of the Institute as they are now. Maybe more. The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Plenty of people assumed I was just a saboteur, moving in to melt down the reactor or poison the drinking water. But at the time, they couldn't exactly turn me away. Massacre of the CPG? What's that? The Commonwealth Provisional Government. Years back, a group of settlements tried to get together and form a coalition. Every settlement with even a hint of clout sent representatives to try and hash out an agreement. Only the Institute sent a representative of their own. A synth. The man killed every rep at the talks. The Commonwealth Provisional Government was over before it even got off the ground. I took up in town not long after. I was damn lucky they didn't just tell me to scram right then and there. Broken mask? This was long before I'd moved to town, but apparently some gentleman type shows up in Diamond City, heads down to Power Noodles. Guess he didn't like the food because he pulled his pistol and opened fire on the folks enjoying theirs. When security finally put enough holes in him to drop him, they say he was full of servos and sprockets, just like yours truly. Seems he malfunctioned, went berserk. It was the first time people realized that synths had stopped looking like me and started looking like them. Considering what these folks went through, I felt real lucky they let me in the front gate at all. Why would you want to live among bigots like that? Nah, I couldn't really blame them, given the circumstances. But folks sure started turning the other cheek when I showed up with the mayor's daughter. Gal of about 15. Pride and joy of the mayor back then man by the name of Henry Roberts. The young Miss Roberts decided she'd run off with some caravan hand she'd uh, <coughs> known for an evening. Turns out the guy was part of a gang of kidnappers. I didn't even know who I was rescuing, just stumbled on a crying girl and four toughs. 
I took her home and the mayor dubbed me a hero, offered me a place in town. Lots of folks protested and said I was a spy, but he wouldn't have it. Taking up in the city was tricky at first, but I never tried to hide what I was, and people seemed to warm to that. You took down four guys by yourself? Well, I didn't have to. Back then, synths were even more of an unknown quantity than they are today. I told them I was rigged to explode and started going beep, hmm. beep, beep. Hardest part of that rescue was keeping from laughing as they climbed over each other to get away. You're not a spy, right? Testing, testing. Hello, Institute, can you hear me? <clears throat> Hello. Hell if I know. If I am, the Institute's plan to gather intel on all the runaways of the Commonwealth has been going off without a hitch. Was it hard, settling in? Yeah, they sure didn't make it easy. I started off doing the jobs no one else wanted. I got more banged up being Diamond City's handyman than I ever did living out in the ruins. But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. Wife runs off with a new paramour and takes the rent money with her? Talk to the synth. An upset father decides moving him and the kids to good neighbor in the dead of night's not the worst damn idea since the bomb? Go get Nick. After a while, the jobs got so backed up, they didn't even ask me to do the handyman stuff anymore. Hell, I was so happy to do it, it was months before I started charging anyone. I never stopped being Nick the synth, but it was Nick the detective folks came to see. It was about then that things, uh, well, things finally started feeling normal. It took me a long time to realize that home is where you make it. And with some time and effort, this place can be home for you, too. That's a long story, but I hope it helps. Want to get moving? I think we ought to talk. Is something the matter? You sound upset. What? Oh, no, no. We've just been traveling a while now, and I figure there hasn't exactly been equitable distribution of information. Gotten a decent glimpse into your dirty laundry, but you still don't really know a whole heck of a lot about me. I uh, figured I'd offer to balance the board. So, is there anything you want to know? What's with the outfit? After I started the agency, it just seemed like the sort of thing a detective ought to wear. I got some old memories, pre-war. Faded to all heck of guys dressed like this, doing what I do. Putting on the hat and trench coat, and I figured it let folks know I was serious about the whole thing. Clothes make the man, and all that. Guess I felt they made me the man I wanted to be. What do you remember about the Institute? It's all pretty hazy from back then, but now and then I get glimpses. Life inside the Institute, they keep you isolated. A single test chamber was my whole world for years. And someone was always watching. Then one day you wake up on the other side, and that's it. They've cut you loose. Welcome to the brave new world with such people in it. So, who are you, Nick? That's a question I've been trying to figure out myself for a long damn time. I know I'm a synth, authentic institute handiwork, but I'm still mechanical. Not bioengineered like the fancy synths giving everyone the willies these days. I get tune-ups now instead of checkups. But my memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Hey. Maybe that's why the Institute tossed me in the garbage instead of turning me into one of their people snatchers. That's terrible. They really just threw you away? Sure did. It was quite the rude awakening. I remember waking up one day in a garbage heap, a body in tatters and a head full of memories belonging to a man who'd been dead for 200 years. Suffice to say, it was a confusing couple of weeks. 
folks didn't really know much about Star Wars, but when the Tropeo and the R2D2 are in the. The kids, they weren't afraid. I think his name was. Some kind of tongue. First person to actually speak to me after I got the boot from the Institute. My first human contact in this world. Grilled me for an hour. Once they'd seen I wasn't going to hurt anyone, the other folks in the neighborhood came out to ogle the mechanical man. It eventually turned into a pretty swell soiree. A local mechanic even gave me a once-over, free of charge. Those people, they treated me like a human being. I've been trying to return the favor ever since. It's a surprisingly rare trait out here sometimes. It's something I've noticed you got a fondness for. Part of the reason I've stuck around this long. Where's that town? We should go visit. I tried to go back and say thanks once I'd gotten myself established. But the place was wiped off the map. Raiders. Don't know what happened to the people. I do what's needed. Well, you certainly seem to judge doing good pretty high on your list of necessities. Well, I expect you're about as bored as can be listening to me rattle my skeletons. You should probably head out. Hey, you uh, got a sec? So it's you just all time. Right. I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but uh, well, it's I know I can trust you at this to point. Talk to as me. long as I can remember, I've been getting these uh, flashes, Maybe that's why memories was of places I've never been. Things I've never seen. That kind to Memories me. of Nix. They're not bad. They're just, um, they're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am. That I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine, pretending to be human. What kind of memories? Everything. Old cases. Old loves. I found myself running background on cases only to realize everyone involved's been dead for 200 years. Don't get me wrong, I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con. Or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City, and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but... My entire life, I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am. My judgment, my speech, hell, even my name. They're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them... Without them, I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. We could give you a new name. Would that help? I got it. Crumblebot. 3000. <laughs> well, I suppose it's the thought that counts. You know, I... I'm just gonna need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're, you're a real good friend. Thanks. Hello again. So long as you have the caps, you're welcome to look around. Fallon's basement. Interesting name. Yeah, it's ancient. There was a Fallon's here back even before the war. Granddad always said we had a tradition of quality and affordability. Guess affordability got too expensive for some folks. Damn thieves. And it ain't like Diamond City security helps. Why doesn't Diamond City security help you? <sighs> My husband got taken, all right, by the Institute. Security wouldn't look into it. I raised a stink, and now I'm blacklisted. Your husband was taken by the Institute. Well, he ain't here anymore, that's for sure. Not like the Institute leaves a trail besides those damn synths. What do you know about synths? Just what I read in the papers. That the Institute builds them, and some even look human. 
So much you can't tell the real difference. Lucky me, huh? Institute takes my Charlie, doesn't even bother replacing him. Hey, uh, Dixie, uh, Valentine. <laughs> I don't need anything. You know your way out. You know, there is this chunk of Nick Valentine history I've been hoping to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. Sure thing. What's the case? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man. He did a lot of bad things. Hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming. So he sealed himself inside a personal shelter, located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. There's more to this, isn't there? The story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. You don't mean to tell me he used that radiation to... That's right. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul. 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him. So that never happens. You in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. Good. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file Could on take some time. for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, including one of Winter's managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. On my way out the door, I spotted an active evidence terminal. I'll bet my hat that terminal is the key to finding the rest of the tapes. Probably worth revisiting any police departments you may have stumbled across in your travels as well. Let's see you these. Message to Johnny Montrano. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You fat, lazy piece of shit. I knew. I knew this arrangement was too good to be true. Let's join forces with the North End, huh? Bury the hatchet? Work mutually against the common enemy? Well, you put the nail in that coffin, huh, boyo? What did you have to do, Johnny? Huh? What was your job? Sit in your car, on the corner. Keep your eyes open. If you see a uniform, you get out. Walk down the street, knock on the door. I had to go outside because I was trespassing. Easy as pie, right? Never been up in the stands? Let's just say they can afford a lot of I could have got a nine-year-old from the projects to do it, but no. In the interest of Irish-Italian relations, well, I give the job to you. So what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. You sit on your fat ass dribbling cannoli cream onto your third chin. You watch. You watch the uniform blow months of planning. All in two minutes. Congratulations, Johnny. You got me. You and your pal sure put the screws to old Eddie Winter. You should tell this funny story to your little girl. Tuck her in at night. In that corner bedroom, upstairs, pink wallpaper, little house on Prince Street. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Winter, 
signing off. There is a second holo tape. Message to Claire Pazinski. Time to start thinking about a vacation. How does six weeks in island sound to you? Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford. Maybe a week in that little bed and breakfast in Kilkenny. And don't worry, we don't have to take my cousin Stephen with us. Let him get out of the country on his own. I told him to threaten that cop. Not blast him in the face with a shotgun. He can rot in that abandoned fishery down in Union Wharf for all I care. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off. And there was a note. Yeah, this one. Andrew Station. Critical rules. Um, say it. 